This is part 4 of my turn-based battle system and let's recap the last 3 um, or basically the last 2 tutorials. In the second one, which is not the introduction, but um, yeah, what we have done in this second part, we just made the first base classes of, uh, of our, our uh, base enemy and our base hero and we also created the state machine for the enemy and the hero. Uh, which will be populated today with the actual battle state machine and of course um, the bar which has to or that progress bar to see when the player is able to do a yeah to do a an action um, and then the last one we were just creating that UI for the user input so we created um, the battle canvas an action panel and a select target panel which we later on will blend in and blend out as we need them but we don't go over this right now so let's get started and open up our hero state machine this state machine will will contain all informations um, about in what state the hero can be in and there are a lot of ways, I believe, to create a state machine, um, and I go and use enums for that. So let's create one and let's see what kind of states we need for our heroes to act with. So let's create that enum at first. Um, so we say public enum, and now we can um, give that a name, and this is going to be my turn state. So, uh, curly brackets. And what kind of states can that hero be in? Well, at first, we have a processing state. So, processing is when the bar is going to fill until, um, until uh, we can do an action with a player. Then we will have an um, uh, for me, I just call this one add to list state. So in this state, we will go over and add this hero to a list. Maybe we will later on change this. Then we will have a waiting state, which will just may, yeah, more or less is going to be an idle state. And then we have an action state we will use to do action and of course our player can be dead so um, we have a dead state maybe uh, we later on um, I just enter this one right in here uh, which is called uh, selecting state selecting when the player is going to select the action which has to be created later on so with that done we also need um, a reference to this enum so we say public turn state and then we can just call this one I don't know current state there we go so what we can do right now is we can um, yeah write the whole switch uh, for all that processing states in our update function so let's delete that and that line we don't need them we know what they are doing so in update we can just uh, create a switch statement which we also can debug uh, later on and this switch will is basically what we uh, can all or could do with an if else if else if else but this is going to be very e or yeah more easy to uh, handle with so what we want to switch is basically the current state we are in so this one and now we can fill that with all our cases in which the current state can be in. So the first state, uh, basically it doesn't really matter in which, uh, in which order you are going to create this. Same with the enum, it doesn't really matter in which yeah order you are creating all that states. It's just um, maybe easier to understand when you're going from the top to the bottom. Um, in which states the character or the hero basically can be in. Uh, let me zoom in a bit so you can see that stuff a bit better in here. Also in the last video we added the public base hero for, for this one so we can populate or basically um, add in stats and stuff 
uh, the hero or the base hero just have. Um, and we also set this one up, I believe. So later on we will use that hero or that base hero um, and use that. So back to the switch statement. Um, switch statements are holding cases. So in case of, and then we have to open and close brackets in here. In case we are in a specific state, and in my case it's going to be turn state dot, and now I can just choose any anything I want. In my case it's going to be processing. If I am in the turn state of processing, normally you would just type out, um, if you would use an if statement, you would just say current state equals equals um, the turn state, whoops, turn state or processing. So if you would use an if statement for this one, you would have to type this. But since we're using switch, we uh, don't need to, to type in that. So that's why uh, we switch that state and we can switch that state like this. Okay, so what we do is after the brackets, we have to um, type in the double dot. Then we leave a space in here, one line without anything in, in here. And then we can just Oh, and then we'll break that switch. So now we can add more cases with all the statements uh, we just created, or basically with all the states in our enum, um, to make sure that we can go through every state we need and call or switch whenever we need them. So in next case will be uh, the turn state dot add to list double dot. Oh, I just go and copy that line with a break in here. Go two, di two lines down and break it. Oh, let me just copy the wool part in here since we need a lot of them anyways. Um, but we don't need those brackets. We just... Yeah, that's okay. Um, and instead of having all of uh, all of them to be add to list, the next one is going to be, I believe, is waiting. So this is going to be our idle state basically. Then the next one in here might be uh, selecting. Oh, let's see. Yeah, selecting. Then it's uh, going to add action. And then we need another one when our player is dead. What else we can do there? Okay, so now we want to create the... Don't forget to save this. And now we want to um, create a new function where we can basically um, go and fill our progress bar over time. And that's pretty simple, as we, uh, as you may have seen in one of my super old, uh, or basically, yeah, super old videos about health bars. We are going basically doing the same in here. We just create a new function for this. It's going to be um, a void, and I just call this function uh, upgrade progress bar. So an upgrade progress bar, or use that brackets in here. An upgrade progress bar, we are yeah, basically going to upgrade our progress bar. So to upgrade that progress bar, we need several things. At first, we need to make sure that we are using uh, Unity Engine.UI, since we want to have access to that image component we just created for the bar itself. Otherwise, we are not able to change its size. Uh, which what what we, which is what we need? We can also um, use image fill instead of the image I just told you that one in the last video. Anyways, um, it's going to be the same, no matter what. Just a bit more code with my current version. So also what I need to for the progress bar is two new variables. The first one I'm gonna comment in here. Um, for the health bar, or oh, basically it's not the health bar, it's the progress bar. Um, and this is going to be um, a public uh, float, 
Um, I believe it can also be private. Yeah. I just create this one private mode. So apply a private float and this is going to be my current so I uh, my current cooldown. So I just type in car underscore cooldown. There we go. And we can yeah, from the start we can just set this one to zero F. Basically we don't need to set this one to anything at the moment since we will fiddle around with that later on anyways but just for the sake of competition we just add this one the second one is going to be our maximum cooldown so i type out uh, private float and max cooldown it's going to be maybe 5f like five seconds okay in start um now we do do that one later. We just skip this for now. Uh, okay, so now we have a current cooldown and a maximum cooldown. Oh, both are private. Uh, and now we can do all of that um, calculation inside our upgrade, um, in our upgrade progress bar method or function. So what we want to do in there is uh, we want to take our current cooldown. So current cooldown is going to be set to the current cooldown and what we want to do is we want want to add time dot delta time so we increase that by running time so every time that thing is called we want to upgrade the time basically the cooldown until we have our maximum cooldown value or more than that so the next thing is for the cooldown or basically for the for the health bar or the pro progress bar what we want to do is we create a float value in here and we just call this one on um, calc cooldown oops typo calc cooldown and what we want to calculate in here is basically the amount um, between uh, the current cooldown and the maximum cooldown. Why are we going to do this is pretty simple. Um, that hero bar or basically the process bar itself or progress bar has um, an X scale value and if I if, if you have seen if X is going to be 1 the bar is going to be full on its maximum position and if it's at zero it will be just blank so nothing has been scaled and we are using this uh, local scale to set this one up and since we are working between zero and one zero represents zero percent one will be 100 percent we need to divide the the first uh, which is the current cooldown uh, we did divide that by the maximum cooldown. So now we have a percentage between those two values and what we get is an amount of zero point whatever um, and this can be used in the next line which will be our progress bar itself. So since we just added the using unity um, and a dot UI we also need the progress bar itself so this needs to be a public image progress bar and there we go and now we have the possibility to say progress bar dot transform dot local scale and the local scale needs to be set um, to whatever calculated cooldown is. So what we say is new vector 3. I believe we can also do that with uh, vector 2 but I don't care. It's basically it's all the same. Um, and what we want to do is we want to clamp that value between 0 and 1 so we start with massf dot clamp and now what do we want to clamp? Basically we want to clamp the calculated cooldown. Um, comma 0, comma 1. So we have the minimum value of uh, 0 and the maximum value of 1. And then we just say comma 
and we don't want to change the x and the y well, or the y and the z axis basically so what we say is progress bar um, dot transform dot local scale dot y and in the last one it's going to be all the same I'm just gonna go over and copy this part but instead of y it's going to be let's go and scroll over it's going to be that or z debat yeah so what we do is we um, clamp the x value of the calculated cooldown between 0 and 1 so it cannot overlap in any way and we don't change anything at the y or local scale or the z local scale and once we have done that um, we want to check where the hell are we or where the hell is the don't forget to end the line where is a semicolon or whatever that's called okay and what we want to do is if the current cooldown is going to be higher or equal to the maximum cooldown then we want to go and change something so if call cooldown is going to be greater or equal to maximum cooldown um yes then we want to do something so let's get back to our state machine right now gonna save this one pretty quick our state machine will uh, when the battle is going to start we and we have done anything like camera stuff and so on we will go into the processing turn state with that player or with that hero basically and we want to make sure that from start that state is going to be active. So in the start function we say the current state is going to be equal to turn state dot processing. So we want to make sure that when that um, state machine of the hero is going to start we are starting here. And this um, state will do, since it is in the update, will repeat the process it is in until we change the process or basically the state. So what we want to do is we want to call upgrade progress bar in that state. Like so. Just call the function upgrade progress bar. And once we hit the maximum cooldown on our current cooldown, we want to change the state to add to list. So the cooldown uh, let me just type this one out pretty quick. So current state is going to be equal to turn state dot add to list. And so once we have more than the five seconds of the maximum cooldown, we want to change the state. So this is what a state machine is. We go from one progress of one state to another depending on the action or on whatever we need. So let's set up our heroes or basically our hero bars in here. At first uh, we have our heroes here. Later on we will just add them automatically. And what you can see hero 1 and 2 containing already the hero state machine. If not make sure that you add them. So as you can see I just filled in some stats we just created in the two videos ago. And what we want to make sure is that the progress bar is set for the right hero. So we take our or go into our hero panel and uh, this is going to be um, the hero bar of hero 1 so I may want to rename this one to hero bar hero 1 and I rename this one to hero bar hero 2. So in hero 1 which is our game object uh, which uh, represents basically that cube. There we go, there it is. Uh, go out of 2D mode. So this cube has its own state machine in here and now we go into the hero bar which um, has to have the connection to that hero bar in our, um, in our GUI. And now what I take is the progress bar of that hero 1 and drag that into our hero state machine of hero 1. Same goes for hero 2, so we close hero bar 1 
for to to avoid um, confusion. And now we are in hero bar hero two, and we take the hero bar or the progress bar and drag that in the hero state machine slot from hero two. So what will happen right now is if I start the game, those bars will start at zero and fill over time. As you can see, works as it has to be. And when the bars are full, we are going to change the state and stop filling that. And I want to show you this one pretty quick in the console. So I add a small debug line in front of the switch statement. So what I say is debug.log and in brackets I just say current state. So just show me what the current state is. And Repeatedly, I will be in the processing state, as you can see right now. And once we are done, we are in add to list, and then it will be repeatedly in add to list. So pretty cool, working fine. Gonna delete or get rid of the debug line, or um, just command this one out for now. Later on, we may need this one once again. So what we have right now is we have a com um, yeah complete working upgrade progress bar for our heroes and also we set it up the base of our of our uh, state machine for the hero itself uh, for the sake of competition we go and do the same stuff for the enemy state machine this uh, will basically do the same later on instead of just uh, using GUI or UI images we don't have them, we, we wouldn't see them, so we can, can get rid of some lines for this. So what I do is, I copy all of that stuff in here, just for now, and uh, copy that or uh, paste that in the enemy state machine, get rid of the public progress bar in here. The maximum cooldown might be a bit higher since you don't want to get overwhelmed, but for yeah, testing we just want to make sure that it's not taking too long. So we have that and also we want to make sure that the enemy's state is going to be the current state he is in at start. So we copy that line too. Now we copy all of stuff all of this stuff in the update and paste this one in here too, so that we have all that state machine in here too. And now we just go and grab the upgrade progress bar uh, function, just go over, copy and paste this under that one. And since we don't have the progress bar again, we can get rid of the this and that line completely. And there we go. Uh, this state may change later on um, on the enemy, but for now we just keep it as it is. So we have now set up the enemy state machine, we have the hero state machine, and now we can uh, populate the whole state machine with all the complex um, back and forth stuff um, to yeah do actually um, the turn based stuff. So what we have right now again, we have a state where the player has to process and then it's going to get added to a list. In the next video I'm going to create the battle, um, um, let's say the battle turns or the turns uh, based, the turn based state machine basically um, for our battle itself and then we push and take actions from back and forth to manipulate the turns in yeah basically in what state are or, or is who and how can we say when is who going to act i hope it's it's going to not, is not confusing too much but we will go over that in the um yeah in the la uh, in the next video uh, what else can I do right now in here is... Well, basically, it's, that's going to be fine for now. Okay, so yeah, stay tuned for the next part uh, where we go and populate the wool stuff and create 
the based or the, the turn-based stuff. Yeah, that's it.